In a story you will see only on Local 5. It may sound like the stuff of your favorite prime time, a TV crime drama, the latest technology being used to provide clues to unsolved crimes. But it is reality in Northeast Wisconsin. As Local 5's Paul Evenson explains, our local law enforcement agencies are turning to new science to solve their oldest cases. It was the evening of June 13th, 1963. The Winnebago County Sheriff's Office received an emergency call. The woman on the phone stated her husband, 24-year-old Wayne Pratt, had been murdered. We had contents of what was left in the cash register, uh, contents in his pockets. Pratt had operated the former Enco gas station that was located along what was then Old Highway 41 between Nina and Oshkosh. He was found face down in the storage room of the gas station, partially covered in a blanket, stabbed more than 50 times. The scene was not very conducive to, to fingerprints. There was no, um, the weapon that was used was never recovered, you know, which would have been maybe one thing that would have been helpful with fingerprints. Today, more than 50 years later, the Winnebago County Sheriff's Office is still working to bring justice to Pratt's murderer. But solving a case that's decades old doesn't come without challenges. You know, when you're working on a case that's 50 years old, you have to overcome quite a bit, you know, as far as how they packaged things, how they stored things, how they handled things, where they sent it, and how it was handled at the labs. And the challenges involved with solving cold cases aren't limited to evidence collection alone. In some cases, the very murder scene itself is now an empty field. The lack of sustainable physical evidence in cases like the Pratt murder is another reason why the department is turning to new science and DNA testing techniques to give them a fresh look at their coldest case. There's, you know, markings, they're numbered, where stains have been evaluated and looked at. New samples from the crime scene blanket have been sent in for DNA analysis and Pratt's body was even recently exhumed from Oak Hill Cemetery so that a second autopsy could be performed. Those tests have proved to be inconclusive. Uh, maybe somebody recognizes the belts. Yeah, you know, my brother-in-law always wore this kind of belts. Um, just more of identifying matters as to who he could have been. The county's most recent cold case dates back less than a decade. Human remains found near a set of railroad tracks in the town of Vinland in 2015. There are some indication that he did have local ties. So, you know, in a community our size or even the surrounding communities, it, you know, you would think that he would be identifiable or at least somebody would be missing him. Although the cause of death has not been determined, authorities don't suspect foul play. Instead, they would simply like to put a face on their John Doe. That's why the department is working with individuals like Jordan Karsten and his team of anthropologists at UW Oshkosh. The students are trained in doing this. They're trained to recognize the skeletal elements. They're trained to excavate at archaeological sites. And so they, they knew what they were doing, and they went in, and they were able to really make a contribution to the community. Jordan and his team performed a type of archaeological dig underneath the area where the remains were found. The additional DNA material collected provided roughly 80% of the subject's skull. Now, new forensic analysis processes developed by Parabon hope to produce a computer-generated image of the person who died so mysteriously all those years ago. The fact that we had a nearly complete skull, we utilized a 3D scanner to print out a 3D replica of the cranium, uh, which allowed one of my students to utilize information that we have on face tissue depth uh, to reconstruct the face of the John Doe. Both cases still remain active, and the Winnebago County Evidence Lab says the growing popularity of things like personal DNA and genealogy testing may give them the edge they need to finally bring them the closure they've been looking for. Hopefully more people will opt in, and um, so cases won't be as cold especially identifying uh, an unknown person, they won't stay as cold as they, some of them are. Five years is a long time to go unidentified. In Winnebago County, Paul Evenson, Local 5 News.
Thank you, Paul. Winnebago County is still investigating each of their four cold cases. You can view the extended interview with Lieutenant Brayman from the Winnebago County Sheriff's Office on our website, wearegreenbay.com.